mad as a hatter. Do you know the story behind the phrase? The insanity behind the character? The phrase was used to describe someone who's crazy or prone to unpredictable behaviour. Between the 18th and 19th centuries, hatters used mercury in their creations. The mercury poisoning resulted in what was believed to be insanity and chaotic behaviour, thus mad as a hatter was born. The following stories are my picks for further discussion. How the impact of mental health, relationship challenges and circumstances can lead to murder. It goes without saying that a mental health diagnosis does not create a murderer. However, in these cases, a diagnosis left untreated, the opportunity and the right catalyst can create a monster. Won't you come with me as we enter Wonderland after dark? Don't worry, it won't hurt. Kristen Gilbert. Her co-workers described her as an angel. An angel of death. November 13th, 1967, Kristen Gilbert was born into the suburbs of Massachusetts. Fall River, Massachusetts to be exact. The same place where Lizzie Borden was accused of killing her family. Kristen actually used to tell people she was related to Lizzie and took joy from the responses she would get. Not something you would expect, right? But Kristen is not somebody you would expect. You see, Kristen was reportedly responsible for what some believe to be 40 plus murders of patients in her care. Some even suspect it was hundreds topping 300 to be exact. But these weren't just any patients. These were people who served their country and were receiving care at the VA medical facility in Northampton, Massachusetts. She would induce cardiac arrest in her patients by injecting them with massive doses of what we know as adrenaline, which is an untraceable heart stimulant to kill her victims. Now, she was only convicted of four murders, but like I said before, the total of people she killed, we might never know. But who exactly is this angel of death? Well, like I said before, she was raised in Fall River, Massachusetts. She entered into her teenage years, really not so much to be one of the cool kids but kind of an odd one out her friends and family noticed early on she had a habit of lying and even making fake suicide attempts to manipulate people more specifically individuals in relationships with her so they would stay and according to court records she made violent threats against others even while she was a teenager keep that in mind because that's going to be important in the end After high school, she would transfer multiple times from one college to another due to her inability to complete programs because she was receiving psychiatric treatment after her suicidal ideations. Again, which I mentioned earlier, they were later discovered to be tools of manipulation so she can control others. She was able to finish an RN program and graduated in 1988. She would marry Glenn Gilbert that same year. But within a month of being a newlywed, she attacked Gilbert with a knife. And the relationship will continue to be riddled with domestic violence. The very next year in 1989, she took a position with the VA centered in Northampton, Massachusetts. This is where she would be given the name Angel of Death, by her colleagues. This was due to the higher number of deaths that would occur while she was on the shift. But what was interesting was she actually liked the name. She took pride in being called the Angel of Death. She would later leave that position in 19, 
96 due to ongoing investigations that had started due to the high amount of suspicious deaths that occurred on her ships. She even went to calling in bomb threats into the hospital to try to divert the investigations. She wasn't successful. So during that time, Gilbert will go on to check herself into psychiatric hospitals off and on up to seven times. Sometimes she would stay a day, some more, up to 10 days at one point. In January 1998, she also began having an affair with the police officer who worked at that same facility that she was being accused of murdering victims. Gilbert will go on to stand trial for calling in those bomb threats to the Northampton VA Medical Center to retaliate against coworkers and her former boyfriend, who she started that affair with. His name was James. He actually assisted in the participation in the investigation. And during court, he stated she told him she had murdered individuals and how she did it. That same year, she was going to go ahead and get a divorce from her husband. But not before she started to cook him home-cooked meals. And why would she just start cooking him home-cooked meals even if she's having an affair with somebody else? You're right. She's laced it with drugs to increase her husband's frequency of going to the bathroom. Which caused a medical issue for her soon-to-be ex-husband. Before her trial, prosecutors claimed that Glenn Gilbert told one witness that his wife was trying to have him out of the house by Thanksgiving, quote, unquote. But we all knew what that meant. There was already speculation from her soon-to-be ex-husband that she, with the ongoing violence in the home and now this reoccurring sickness, was trying to kill him. There is even one occurrence because she was a well-respected nurse, that she said to the attending physician that she wanted to take a blood sample of her husband herself and have it tested later at the hospital where she worked. One syringe was filled with clear liquid, and Kristen told her husband it was just saline solution. But as soon as she inserted the needle, Glenn reported his arm grew cold, and when he tried to pull away from his wife, she pinned him against the wall with her hip. Not really a loving wife thing to do. So later, a divorce would occur. Christian would leave to be with her lover. But things will continue to downsborough. The VA hospital staff speculated that Gilbert may have been responsible for over 350 more deaths and 300 medical emergencies. The prosecutor in her case even assisted, asserted that Gilbert used these emergency situations so she could get more attention from her then boyfriend. Remember the VA police officer that she started cheating and having an affair with? Yeah, that guy. And even when a quote unquote delusional war veteran refused treatment in her ward because of the rumors. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, he heard. People are dying around her for no reason. The patients were talking about it. The staff was talking about it. The staff is talking to patients about it. The man was, after all, unwell. So they allowed him to still be seen by her. He was later injected and killed by Kristen, his attending nurse. A psychiatrist who serves as chief of staff at the facility theorized that she can create emergency medical situations to display her proficiency as a nurse. She wanted people to see her, to like her. Well, all of this came to an end July 11th, 1996. You see, that's when Kristen was arrested. She would later be tried and convicted on March 14th, 2001 on three counts of first degree murder one count of second degree murder, and two counts of attempted murder. An angel of death. But let's look a little deeper. What were some smoke signals that we missed? Now, Kristen was officially diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, also known as or referred to as BPD. 
And there were symptoms that she ex- exhibited that fall into borderline personality disorder. And some of those signs were intensive fear of abandonment, a pattern of unstable, intense relationships, rapid changes of self-identity and self-image or shifting goals and values, periods of stress-related paranoia, suicidal threats or behavior or self-injury in response to that fear of separation or rejection, mood swings, ongoing feelings of emptiness and inappropriate intense anger. And when you look at Christian's story, you see all of this going back to before she was a teenager. And that is also important because even though she was not diagnosed with the other cluster B disorders, which are antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. There are two of them that stand out. She did exhibit narcissistic personality disorder. And as I always say, when I say narcissistic personality disorder, that is a clinical diagnosis. There's a lot of talk and people using the term, you're a narcissistic, she's narcissistic. People can have narcissistic behaviors or tendencies but when I'm using NPD or narcissistic personality disorder I am referring to the clinical DSM-5 description of what that is and she met a lot of those qualifications but that's not the biggest concern because even with borderline personality disorder there's some there's still some empathy here It might not be the empathy that somebody without this disorder would have, but there's still some empathy. Even with narcissistic personality disorder, they care what you think. It might not be the same way, right? It's a pride thing. I want people to see me like this. I want people to think I'm the greatest, It's the antisocial personality disorder that we want to be aware of. Now, psychopath and sociopath are not clinical diagnoses that you find in the DSM-5. So you cannot go to a professional and they diagnose you as a psychopath or a sociopath. Those terms are clumped into what a condition called antisocial personality disorder, also referred to as ASPD. This is the disorder that takes away the safety mechanism to the borderline personality disorder. Why is that? Because they don't care. Now I do want to note psychopaths are born right? There are brain scans to show you that the part of the brain where empathy is stored or where those feelings originate don't really fire up like they should. A sociopath is made due to environment, due to circumstances. But the key factor here is they have no problem manipulating and hurting others. They don't have it to understand and distinguish between right and wrong. They will violate the rights of others. They feel behavior and conflicts is normal. Reoccurring problems with the law you might see. General discard towards safety and responsibility and expressing anger and arrogance on a regular basis. This, these are the behaviors mixed with her diagnosed borderline personality disorder, untreated, mind you, that created Christian Gilbert, the angel of death. So what does that all mean for you? When you are in a relationship, it's a part of the process to learn the person. One thing to note, people who are borderline personality disorder, they like the thrill. They like the adventure. They like the infatuation. The challenge happens when we settle into an actual relationship. You have a constant battle between trying to get that feeling again versus the steadiness of a safe relationship. 
But again, that doesn't make you a murderer, as in Christian's case. It's that mixture of untreated disorder, antisocial personality disorder in this case, that lack of empathy, the I can do no wrong because I can't distinguish between right and wrong. Uh, You're going to see something there. Now, again, the terms of unofficial, right? Unofficial, informal terms, psychopath, sociopath, same clinical diagnosis of antisocial personality disorder, but your psychopaths are going to have these behaviors before the age of 15, before, you know, you get into the high puberty ages. So you're going to see people who are, they can tell you when they're, you're learning about your partner, maybe when they're telling you stories about their 13, 14, 12 year old, how they might harm animals. They have a tendency to lie or hurt people or manipulate people. The key is they don't see anything wrong with it. And the same thing when you're getting to learn somebody and you hear some of their stories, that's why it's so important to listen. Go at a certain pace where you can learn the person. Because one thing I will say about narcissistic personality disorder, every narcissist, every person who has narcissistic personality disorder is not a psychopath, but every psychopath is a narcissist. And with that comes a level of charm to draw you in. Okay. So our pick for this Mad Hatter episode is more learning about slowing things down to learn individuals. Find out who you're really dealing with. Because if you think (laughs) you can change a psychopath or a sociopath, eh, I wouldn't try it. Because if you cross them, you're going to learn real quick and real fast who you're dealing with. So as I say with all of these, just having a diagnosis does not make you a murderer like the individuals that I'm going to be talking about in the series, but they are things you want to look for and be aware of. And that way you have the ability to make an educated decision how you intend to move forward. So if you want to learn more, about Kristen Gilbert or any of the other cases that we'll be talking about, there is a playlist that is on our YouTube channel called the Mad Hatter playlist, where you can learn more about all of these cases, all of the diagnoses and what to look for. And then how to determine if you are in a relationship with somebody with these diagnoses and how to manage if you're going to stay in that relationship or how to safely remove yourself. So hopefully something in this episode was helpful because we don't want you ending up as one of the Mad Hatter's picks.